Okay, the next step in creating a custom theme is considered a best practice. So the WordPress organization requires that we add a chunk of code to one of our files that we just created. So I'm going to go find our theme under WP-Content and then under Themes and then Custom Theme. And it's this file right here, the style.css file. Remember, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. This is the file where we're going to add code that will give our theme some color and some fonts and some graphics and things like that. But as a best practice, we have to put some co code up here at the top, a chunk of code. So what I'm going to do is grab a chunk of code from one of these other pre-existing themes. So if you have a theme in, inside of your uh, themes folder, a different one, go ahead and open it up. I'm going to open mine called 2016 here and find the same style.css file. So I double click that. And this stuff is what we need right here, where you've got the forward slash and then the asterisk down to the first asterisk and forward slash. So I'm gonna copy all of that. So Command C on a Mac, Control C on Windows, and I'm gonna bring it over to my style sheet, which is inside of the custom theme folder. And just paste that right in. Okay, so and make sure you save that. So Command S on a Mac, Control S on PC. And now I'm going to get rid of this other theme's style sheet. So just close that out so that we don't get confused. So all we did was we opened up another theme in here and grabbed this code from inside of this style sheet from that pre-existing theme and pasted it over to our style sheet. So I'm going to close that other theme up now. And what we're going to do is just modify this so that it's custom to us. But this is considered a best practice. You need to have this chunk of code with these asterisks and forward slash um, for this to be a valid theme. Okay, so let's modify this. This is just gonna be a temporary modification. And this is just for this project, so it doesn't have to be official. But first, I'm gonna highlight all of this and hit the tab key. So that's tabbed in where that's kind of just the proper way of formatting it. And then we're just going to rename all of these things after each colon. So here I'm going to type custom theme. We don't have a website for our theme yet, so I'm just going to leave that. Uh, we'll just keep it as wordpress.org. That's not really what we should be doing, but since this is a project, that's okay. We can change that later if we ever choose to publish this. Author, you can just put your own name or username. I'm just going to put my Cloud9 username there. I'm going to leave this the same because we don't have uh, a website yet. Okay, so there's this long description here. I'm going to get rid of this and just type in something simple. Okay, we're just going to say this theme is version 1.0. That doesn't really matter for now. Leave the license the same. There are different licenses and we can worry about that later. We don't know what colors we're going to be using or other formatting, so we'll just leave this kind of simple for now. I'm going to highlight all that and just say black since that was the first thing that was there. And text domain, we're just going to say custom theme, one word. Okay, and what we're going to do is just get rid of all that. We don't need that. So this is all we need. This is the bare minimum. This is considered a best practice by WordPress. You need to have this chunk of code right here with the forward slash and the asterisks. So let's save that. And then one more thing we're gonna do, this isn't a necessary step, but it is good to do. Uh, we want to have a little screenshot for our admin area. Okay, so if I go ahead and hit run project, your server may already be running, but mine's not, so I'm gonna hit run project. Okay, my server's running, I'm gonna click this URL and hit open. And then I'm going to log into my admin section. So forward slash WP dash admin and hit enter. Okay, I didn't have to log in because I was already logged in. And then I'm going to hit appearance and then go to themes. And you'll see now we have this theme here, our custom theme, but there's no picture inside. So if we wanted to add a picture, we could just add a little screenshot in there. And I'm just going to do this the simple way. I'm going to go over here 
And just to show you how this works, you don't have to do this at all. We're going to go to a website called Photos for Class. And I'm going to click on this. And in this search bar, I'm going to just type WordPress. You could really search for anything here. We just need a placeholder image. I'm going to grab this one right here and hit download. Okay, it's been downloaded. And now what I'm going to do is go back to Cloud9 and I'm going to drop that file inside of this little folder right here called Custom Theme, this folder we created. So I'm going to drop the image that I just downloaded in there. Find it in my Downloads folder. Just grab it and drag and drop right inside there. Not any of these other ones. It has to go inside Custom Theme. There we go, it's been uploaded into the Cloud9 servers, and I'm going to rename this, so right click, oops, I can just left click, and it changes like that, and I'm going to say screenshot, okay, and leave it as .png, it might be .jpg for JPEG format, but just leave it as one or the other, it needs to be .png or .jpeg, so I'm going to hit enter. And I'll close this preview of it out. Now if we go back to our admin area and refresh, there, now we've got a screenshot. So that's how you add screenshots. You may want to actually just take an actual screenshot of your theme once it's done, but you can add a picture like that. And there we go. Now our theme has a screenshot, and it has followed the best practice of having this code added to the top of style.css.